If you remember recently, Guy Gerber was accused of rape by uh, a young lady and he basically came out fighting, swinging and saying he didn't do it and that he was going to file charges against the accuser because in his head it was a consensual experience. And it was a strange one because I asked some other people who I speak to about stuff like this and they were kind of 50-50 um, in terms of who they believed or what they think occurred. And then I also got some insight from other people who told me that unfortunately in this scene of like business techno or whatever you're going to call this flipping community of people, there is, or EDM, whatever guy ever plays now, there is unfortunately also this kind of scene and culture around it where there are these really um where there are these girls who are basically going to these events for the sole purpose of trying to hook up with djs to not to miss my words right and these djs are also going to these events playing and looking out for said girls so there's clearly a bit of a scene that's kind of revolving around it i know firsthand because one event i went to won't name which one but I remember talking to a couple of people who were involved with it and these girls were what you describe as your typical sort of like Instagram lifestyle influencer. The kind of person who's always at Mick, the kind of person that jumps from Mykonos to Ibiza to Tokyo to Bogota to Berlin to Paris, like within six months, right? They always seem to be at these cool places. Nothing too extravagant in terms of monetary value, in terms of showing a chain or a massive car, but the background always changes and it always looks exotic. So usually you can tell that kind of person's, you know, basically location independent, uh, maybe has a, you know, a pretty decent job that allowed them to move around place to place or has a pretty decent trust fund. But those people, said girls are now getting themselves involved in the music industry whether it's you know helping out behind the scenes whether it's being a DJ artist themselves or just working a kind of bog standard social media job so i know those people exist so if those people exist and you know people on the nightlife industry blinds get blurred after drinks and drugs things can get weird i can kind of see these events i can kind of see why these things happen but i could also kind of see why if you're a dj and you're at this event you can kind of think these things are mutual because these people kind of get around you for the sole purpose of trying to suck some of the clout off of you, which is, you know, bad turn of phrase, but you know what I mean. So I don't really know where I stand in who I believe in this whole affair in general. But like I said previously, when it comes to sexual assault allegations or rape allegations in dance music scene, the only thing that really bums me out about this is that usually, for the most part, when someone gets accused of something, it's very rarely like a one-off occasion. It's very rarely this person went out on a date with somebody and they just read the signals wrong and they did something they weren't meant to do or something. Not rape, of course, but like, you know, they read the signals wrong, they tried to touch when they weren't meant to touch, whatever happened. It's never something like that. It's always usually that one story and then you dig a bit deeper and you find out there's a catalogue of allegations behind them and much like the catholic church and flipping these you know awful priests who touch up kids who should be thrown into the nearest volcano there is a cabal there's kind of like this like hush society that kind of revolves around the dance music scene with certain people where they kind of keep the stuff under wraps and they don't let it come to the public or they don't let it go, go to press and the thing that really kind of buns me about it is that I'm pretty much, I'm pretty certain in most sort of like service industry jobs or hospitality schools, industries, I'd imagine behind the scenes that people who actually keep the kind of the motor turning and the engine going are women, right? Who work behind the scenes, who kind of are doing the admin type stuff, who are just kind of keeping the lights on. So it's really unfortunate to see a scene and a community of people where maybe front facing there's not much representation diversity but i'm sure behind the scenes at booking agents at managers places and shit event planners um venues themselves there's many women who work there and they are kind of purposely turning a blind eye to what they're seeing just because of the scene that they're in and it's just that's the only thing that bounds me out because i think you know m monsters such as what Guy Gerber has been accused of, they're always going to exist. Unfortunately, we're always going to live in a world where people are out there who are ready and willing to take advantage of any and anyone that crosses their path, or especially women if they've got that kind of thing about them. So we can't necessarily get rid of them because they're going to exist in one way or the other. But what we can do is have a much better way of kind of dealing with it once we do see it and kind of calling it out straight away and doing something because we know the courts and the criminal justice system isn't going to help these people. So there needs to be another way to kind of, you know, get some form of justice. But what do I know? Anyway, it continues. This is an article. Um, it says, Guy Gerber's defamation claim against 
Ma- Marvi Demars, who accuses him of spiking and raping her in a party in 2013, is entering its first phase tomorrow, October 20th. Scheduled at the Judicial Building in Fort Mentera, Spain. I actually went to Fort Mentera, lovely place. Um, Thursday's council conciliation meeting is a mandatory part of the process for a defamation case, which Gerber launched only days after Demars' allegation first surfaced via Instagram. I don't know why, but I feel like I know who this person is, Mavi Demars. I feel like I've spoken to them on Instagram or something before in the past. I don't know why. I can't picture it and stuff. And talking about picture it, that's the really unfortunate side in it of coming out and alleging anybody noteworthy or anybody famous of what this lady's accusing Guy Gerber of. Because intrinsically, it looks like she might be an artist herself or a musician of some sort. She getting interviewed there, it looks like, or as a panel discussion. Um, your name is intrinsically linked now to this person forever and ever. I just Googled her name. I didn't Google anything else today, right? Yeah, I just Googled her name. And obviously, you see pictures of Guy Gerber come up all over the place and her picture of him, a picture of him next to it, next to her as well. So those are one of the things that you kind of don't want as well, especially if you're trying to pursue a career in the entertainment industry because you never know that may actually that may actually dissuade or put off some people from booking you, which is gross to even say that, but I'm sure that does happen in the industry. Um, but yeah, let's go back to the article itself. It says that the meeting Gerber and, De- and Demars will be given the chance to discuss the situation and reach an agreement. A second meeting will take place at a later date. This is the final step before the case goes to court. Huh? You meet to reach an agreement, then you have a second meeting, then you go to court. What a weird way of doing things, isn't it? This is this how they do it in Spain. Interesting. Speaking to resident advisor, DeMar said she'd received the legal summons for the first meeting on September 20th. She said she's ready to launch her own criminal case against Gerber pending the outcome of the meetings. These criminal proceedings will be attend- at- at- action in Greece where the alleged incident took place and where she has already been speaking with a lawyer. Yo, what a crazy case, isn't it? I've never heard of somebody, a guy especially coming out. The only thing I've heard of where it got really serious in terms of speaking out <clears throat> was obviously, sorry, Justin Bieber, if you guys remember that story, where he got, I think, accused of, was he got accused of? I think, yeah, I don't think he got accused of the R word, but he definitely got accused of something inappropriate, and he immediately came out with the receipts. And luckily for him, he's young enough, and it happened recently enough for him to have all those receipts. So he had like DMs, he had like location things, like loads of things that people wouldn't necessarily have back in 2013, and he was able to have it and kind of cleared his name instantly over off the back of a couple of Instagram stories and whatnot. It was quite expertly done, but this is interesting because. I've never heard of a dude coming out quickly and kind of going, you know, straight to bat with sort of this kind of thing and say, hey, I didn't do it. And then went to go and file a defamation case against a person, against the accuser. And then I've also not heard the accuser kind of doubling down off the back and saying, no, I'm not lying. This has definitely happened. Um, and I'm willing to go to court for it too. Um, I guess we're going to see who blinks first. As it continues, and according to Demars, she was spiked and raped by Gerber at a villa party in Mykonos in July 21st, 2013, when she was 28 years old. She said she was a completely sober at the time of the party, and she sat next to Gerber while waiting for a phone charger. He offered me a drink and a line. The next thing I know, he's leaning in to kiss me, she said. In my head, I started panicking. I went to push him away, but I couldn't use my arms. Then he just put his arms around me, walked me into his room, and like a dimmer switch. Jesus, I was out. The mouth told Ari she woke up in a panic and felt a bruising pain between oh yeah, 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 between her legs that lasted three days. The incident totally derailed my life. I went from being a happy, open person to a darker, more introversed, introspective person version of myself, she said. Gerber denied the allegations via Instagram on June 21st, calling them an ugly lie. His post included a legal document confirming the launch of a defamation case against the mass. Ari reached out to Gerber to comment and received a response from this lawyer. My client trusts the Spanish legal system and wants to clear his name against false accusations which coincidentally had been published hours before his show in Ibiza. That's weird. So, so they're saying because she put out the article, or because the, 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 the article was published or whatever before his show in Ibiza, that that's her clout chasing, that it didn't happen. But you're you're like a well known person. Why would why wouldn't she do that? What why wouldn't you time your release of your thing to coincide with what he's putting out so that more people will be aware of your story so that you can get some justice for it? Ain't that the whole point? Why does he think that's a bad thing? Or why does he think that makes her look bad? It doesn't really. Um it continues, uh he wants the truth to come out and he will not allow his reputation to be damaged. Mr. Gerber has evidence which demonstrates that the individual who posted such accusations isn't telling the truth. Hmm. I'm interested to see that. 
According to this Mars, she was living in London when she met first her first met Gerber. This period of her life was a peak of personal and professional achievement, she says. Um, but the election incident led to her uh, led to let let led her down a self destructed spiral caused by depression, repression and disassociation triggered by Gerber's abuse, she said. She left London for Cyprus in twenty thirteen, six months after the alleged incident. She had healing she said healing became a priority in twenty sixteen when she was back in living in London. It was around the time that she began contacting to play pressing charges against an Israeli DJ. So she's been thinking about this since 2016, happening of happened in 2013, and to 2016 she happened about it. She does. Honestly, man. This the damage stuff like this does to people, man, it's just crazy. Already the thing about her turning into a different person is already heartbreaking. And then to have that on your mind since 2016 and then seeing this guy's star rising all those years and being lauded and praised and put impressed and whatnot, it must be hard to take it continues in 2020 the mars moved to ibifa where she was began where she began to promote a zero tolerance policy against sexual abuse with a campaign called me too dot music oh yeah i remember seeing this maybe that's where i probably yeah i think so i remember seeing this i'm pretty sure i spoke to this lady i'm pretty sure she said seeing a fly promoting goes uh, gerber's mirror games party led to her speaking out on instagram it was a t it was a total this is it moment she said i instantly knew i wouldn't be able to live with myself if i didn't do something about now and i thought the other women of the island i know and love could suffer the same way it was too much uh to hear so i did what i did you know what's funny about this this sounds exactly like what happened to chris D'Elia, the comedian he allegedly was accused of what he was accused of and then one of his alleged victims was at home just chilling and this is obviously the summer where he was all over the place and, you know, hotter than fish grease. She turns on her Netflix and he's there in the advert for, I think, you. I think you he was in, maybe season two, maybe season three, I'm not too sure. And then she said, okay, enough's enough. And she kind of just blasted him out there in public. So that's a real danger if you're somebody notable and you're a monster like this, is that because you're famous and notable, you're going to be everywhere. So you're going to feel like you can get away with it because you're famous, but then you also don't know the other side of it is that because your face is everywhere, you're going to you're gonna keep triggering your victims to the point where one of them's going to be like, enough is enough, and they're going to tell. So it really is the worst type of crime to do because you eventually are always going to get caught. Always. Always. They continue. The mass said she had she had focused on to empower other women to speak out to so she can collectively initiate um, systemic change for safer dance floors. Unfortunately, I don't think the industry actually cares. That's the issue. It's good what she's doing, but I think largely the industry doesn't doesn't care about it at all. Born in 1977, 1974, okay, cool, but you know. But yeah, I don't think the industry actually cares. But yeah, more to follow soon. We'll keep an eye out for what's going on. Um, you know, wishing nothing but positive vibes to you. what's her name mavi de mars hopefully it works out and she gets the conclusion that she wants and if it doesn't work out and it actually is proven in the court of law that she was lying i'm also interested to see what the response will be from the press and from maybe the larger dance music scene community overall because like i said there is a weird kind of culture and underground thing going on over on the edm tech house side of things with girls and whatnot and young ladies that hasn't really been reported on to any level of uh detail but when it does i think it might shock some people what's going on behind the scenes man because i can just see it from what i can looking at from just instagram and going out to parties i'm seeing it's becoming a bit weird how these these girls who in my opinion don't look like they listen to any of the music in their free time are now kind of flooding these places and they're usually always behind the booth which makes sense because you know they're all attractive looking people so why not have them behind you when you're playing but there's something weird going on there i'm not too sure what no one to put any smart on no one's names but i'm the man i don't know something isn't too kosher over there mate something isn't too kosher over there